uh, developing for mobile is a pain in the ass. A pain in the ass. I've had trouble finding a tool that I like using that results in minimal headaches and works out of the box. I've done some Java with the Android SDK, Java and libgdx, and I spent some time with JavaScript and HTML5 Canvas, and I've used Python in Pygame, but nothing really felt right. I would run into some problem or another, and even after months of development I would eventually quit a project instead of trudging on with these tools. This caused a lot of burnout by the time I got my Ouya. At first I was so excited to be able to develop for it, but by the time I actually received it, I just couldn't bring myself to do any mobile development. Gideros saves today? Get get Gideros? Gideros? Gedevros? I don't know. Recently I began looking again at tools and frameworks for making Android games, and I happened to come across a thread on Reddit for Leyenda, a game made with Gideros. Gid Gideros. And they were also giving out their code. But Gideros? What is this Gideros thing? I've never heard of it. Well, Gideros is a mobile framework that you can use to make applications for Android and iPhone, and it uses the Lua scripting language. Gideros also provides its own version of classes, which is something that Lua itself doesn't inherently have as a feature. It also impressed me on first install. Run the IDE, open an example, open the sample runner, boom, it works! Install the IDE on Linux, run with Wine, oh, the sample runner doesn't work, but hey, you can hook up your phone wirelessly and test your project just by hitting play. And let me tell you, a product working just straight out of the box is one of the greatest things I can appreciate. So often it feels like there's extra things to finagle with, or something the documentation doesn't cover appropriately. Uh, in general, I just deem it a waste of time and I move on to the next thing. If it doesn't work immediately, it's a waste of time. Maybe if I have time to come back to it later, maybe then it'll be okay, but usually I'm just looking for something that works so I can continue working. My favorite language is C++, so if I can deal linking with various libraries, I should be able to deal with your framework. And scripting languages are far from my most favorite thing in the world. I feel like I'm being kind of an old curmudgeon programmer coot by saying eh, I prefer static typing, since scripting languages seem to be kind of a, a hot thing these days, but it just seems to make more sense to me. I mean, everything is clear and defined at compile time, it's just the way I think, I guess. None of this Whoa, what is this thing? You don't know until you run it! Silliness. But I like Lua. Lua and I are buddies. I've used Lua with C++ and Lua with Love2D. Lua has some amount of elegance to it, and even though it's a scripting language, I think I might like like it. Shh. So I built Pick and Sticks. What else? Well, it has basic state handling. Fuji UI buttons, a weird-ass D-pad that gives you floaty controls, and I even put in translation support, because Pick and Six needs that. Really, the game itself only has one word you care about, score, but most of my future games are going to have multiple language support anyway, so I might as well have a test run of it with Pick and Sticks. Sometimes you don't feel like doing graphics, so you go for a pixel art style. I tried to go for ZX Spectrum style here. Um, and it works. I'm not really going to work on pixel art for all of my games, but it, pixel art does scale up well. I mean, blocky is blocky at any resolution. Uh, sometimes nice hand-drawn art doesn't look good scaled down, and it definitely looks bad scaled up. So I guess it's really about finding a happy medium for your artistic style. And why Pick and Stick 74? Well, because there are a lot of Pick and Sticks games out there, but I don't know how many, so I kinda just ballparked it. So I released Pick and Sticks on the Google Play Market, but the only way I could think of of even justifying putting Pick and Sticks out on a marketplace would be to open source it. So it's also on GitHub, like most things I work on. I guess that's my novel gimmick. It's a shitty game, but you can also download the source code and assets. Yay! And yes, I'm aware that it asks for your GPS coordinates, and I haven't figured out why yet. Everyone is thoroughly creeped out by the possibility of Pick and Sticks being an app created to spy on you. I'll look into it. I think it's because I originally had accelerometer controls, but then I removed them. 
So I must have missed something, or maybe it's something I have to manually disable. Something else I need to research more about Gideros, or Gideros, or G-I-D-E-R-O-S. I don't know. Now, download the game so I can find out where you live. So what went right? Well, I found a framework that I can possibly tolerate, and I've begun my next project with it. It was pretty easy to implement pick and sticks, basic states, uh, Gatoros does the basic scaling for you so I didn't have to do all these calculations to get the screen to like blow up or any special rendering or anything like that. Uh, not having to worry about different resolutions unless you want to. It was easy to export, sign, upload. Uh, Gatoros Gitteros is available for free, so long as you're okay with the little splash screen at the beginning, you can pay to get that removed. I think it's a, a yearly fee, but it's not too bad of a fee either. But so what? When I start up Unreal Tournament, it tells me everybody and their moms who created the games. Just so many games these days, they have splash screens, so make it look official. Show Gitteros, and then show your own splash, right? And what went wrong? Well. Debugging errors in scripting languages, for me, are a little less clear than in a compiled language like C++. Usually it'll just be kind of a generic, like, thing isn't working, and you have to kind of figure out what's going on. That's a little bit frustrating. I was able to debug every runtime error that I ran into, uh, but it's still a little bit frustrating when it's just like, this error message does not help at all. And apparently, I'm a creepy stalker, and I want to know everybody's location.